What's up, everybody? I'm Jerry Gamer, and welcome back to the channel today. Today, we're back, and today I am giving you my 90 hour review of Dragon's Dogma 2. I initially made my video, my review, at 30, 40 hours in the game. And from that point till now, well, some things have changed, some things have stayed the same. So we're gonna talk about the gameplay, the combat, the exploration, location, story, all the things that make Dragon Dogma 2 great. And some of the things that make it not so great as well. So my fans, without further ado, let's dive in. While we're having this discussion, I'm gonna be looking for some God's here armor as well. We are in the post world. This is spoilers. You haven't been here. This is new game. Before you get new game plus, this is a secret new game you can get to. In order to get here, you have to use the God's Bane weapon and stab yourself while you're while you're on top of the dragon next to his heart. And it takes you here. But we're gonna talk about the game. So initially when I play the game, some things I loved, I love the exploration, I love the class, I love the gameplay. And I, those are things I still really enjoyed in the game. Some of the things that I didn't like when I first made my review of the game was I hated the fact that sometimes I gotta walk all the way back. There's no fast travel in the game. And also too, at that point, I didn't really touch in the story because I was really not that far into it. So I was like, I'm not gonna really talk on the story if I don't haven't really finished it yet. But now I'm in a position of where I've beaten the story, the main story game. I'm in the post game. And now I can speak out like, well, what was my thoughts of the story prior and afterwards well? So things I love, the combat, the combat's fantastic. I love the vocations are dope because they make you feel cool. I use Mystic Spear Hand, I use Warrior, I use Thief, I use Mage. And they also make you feel really, really, really cool. I got this spell and just boom. Just destroy destroy him. He feels really, really cool. And I also for me, I haven't dived into Wayfarer yet because I'm saving that for my next game playthrough. Because I want to keep things fresh. But 90 hours is the game. Combat. How did it improve? Combat was good. Combat feels good. Exploration feels good because you can find a lot of things, use a lot of things to see, a lot of monsters to find, a lot of secrets. But I felt that exploration in the standard game wasn't as rewarding because some of the rewards you got were not that great. And you sometimes you find money, but majority majority of the time, when it came to your weapons and armor, most of the stuff you got was the stuff that you bought. And it wasn't until I got to this portion of the game where you start to find some amazing God tier stuff, which really makes exploring the world a lot more satisfying when you're out in the wild looking for things. In this world, all the oceans dried up and you have a lot more areas to explore. So it's not just a base game, it's you have the regular stuff to explore, but also too, all where water would have been. There's now monsters and harder monsters and mini bosses as well. So it allows you to find a lot more cooler stuff, really good end game gear. And it kind of puts a different dark twist on the game versus the tone that's taken like initially. When it, so combat's good. When it comes to combat, I, I found the game easy, to be honest. I play Monster Hunter, I play Souls-like games, so I found it for the most part easy. And there's some arguments people are saying, well, you can play without your pawns and it makes it more difficult. And yeah, you can do that. But is that the way the game's designed to play versus just overall, just straight difficulty? So I found the game pretty easy. It gets a little more harder when it gets to this mode. I'm. This is the same thing I heard with Dragon's Dogma 1. It was typically an easier game until you got to the DLC, which made it a little more challenging. So I'm excited to see what Capcom does moving forward with some DLC for the game. But yeah, overall, the combat well, it's not a hard game. It's this game I see is more exploration, fun, seeing what kind of quirky things can happen because that's where the game truly shines. The game is alive. And you could be chilling. Next thing you know, an ogre just comes over and falls over. It becomes a bridge for you to climb over to get to a different platform. There's different ways you can mix up your skills. And that's where the game is truly a really good adventure game. It's a really, really good adventure game. It's funny, when I'm streaming the game, a lot of people come and ask me, is this game better than Elden Ring? And it's like, no, they're not the same game. They're different games. Elder Rings is a Souls game, it's more difficult, there's exploration in it. But this one's really just focused on the pawn system, the 
bills playing with your pawns and also just like exploring and see what kind of crazy things you can find out in the wild that's where this game truly comes to life compared to what you would expect from an elden ring so are they similar yeah they're both open world games they're both action rpgs you can build there's class system in both of them does it make it the same game no but there are some similarities i wouldn't call them i wouldn't put them in the same category honestly this game was a good 8.5 for me but it went up to a nine because of this world because it just makes the game so much fun to explore it's different also too they give you a lot of these little crystals of fairy stones which allow you to traverse throughout the world at ease so i think for me the one thing that was still an opportunity for me at 90 hours in is exploration sometimes i just didn't feel like taking that long trek across the world and yes the argument is there is there ox cart yes you can take the ox cart so that that made it better it didn't fully alleviate the opportunity i feel faced with exploration in game but it did make it better one thing i would like if they give us a mount we can farm give us we can for a fly a griffin or a horse or something that makes traversal a little bit faster than what we're given in the game currently when it comes to the story i didn't find myself truly connected with it i felt like it was fine we're just starting to cycle the risen again the dragon's there take him down then you take him down or create the, continue the cycle or you stop it i felt like it was fine it wasn't that this now i'll be super excited to continue playing just for the story but for me like i'm biased towards the gameplay because that's what i mostly play and i enjoy when i'm playing my games is riveting gameplay so to kind of bring that together i think combat's good exploration's great stories whatever um my classes i felt like i wanted more when it comes to like skills that i can use i didn't like how there wasn't an advanced vocation for my thief but they're gonna bring one out in the dlc as they or i'm, sure, I'm not sure if it's dlc they asked the poll on twitter say if we want a ninja or a samurai so they're looking into it so that'd be cool to see that as i feel like i wanted more skills from my vocation when it came from is this a move step forward for dragon dogma as in dragon dogma one to two i feel like this is they played it safe well, to be honest i feel capcom played it safe played with what they had already and enhanced that experience but didn't necessarily push the envelope too far too far when it comes to the dragon dogma in the series i felt like the first one was a cult classic and i think the same that they want to keep the second one a cult classic instead of making it more mainstream and uh, as you can look at the sales number it sold 2.5 million in 11 days it's doing pretty damn good 2.5 million at 70 bucks for a game that's a, lot, that's a lot of sales so one it worked people are buying capcom games because of their history of the games they came out with resident evil street fighter monster hunter so right now everyone's like if capcom makes a game they know what they're doing so they're gonna buy it was there a lot of controversy around the microtransactions yeah a single player game don't need microtransactions single player games and microtransactions are catered for people that don't that work full time don't have time to play the games as that like somebody else so they can get them a little edge or catch, help them catch up but i don't feel like anything you need is necessarily needed in the game me as well i do content i work full time and also have a child now so i understand but you know we still find a way to get 90 hours in the game and still really have a really really good time with it as i got over the 40 50 hour mark the traveling thing was not as annoying it was still annoying but i still kind of got used to it and it's used as an opportunity for me to just one try out new skills try new classes level up new vocations as well because if i'm going to go across the map i'm going to fight a million mobs good opportunity for me to level up my mage or something else so that's how i kind of offset the tra traversal opportunity that i feel like i faced in a game but nonetheless i feel like people ask me this all the time is this game worth it should i buy it if you like rpgs if you like action rpgs exploration buy the game you're gonna enjoy it you're gonna enjoy it if you don't like those kind of games this isn't your cup of tea then you probably won't because you kind of want to want you're probably gonna want some more um modernized features in the game that this one is more of a traditional rpg in 2024 so it's up to you i can't make a decision for you if you bought it i played it i enjoyed it i put 90 hours into the game me if i don't like a game on my channel i don't play it so like i kind of leave that as that so my 90 hour review of the game is it's good 
end game made it really really fun for me this part because it, just a brief little breakdown in this world you have 12 days to save the world or the game ends and it just goes straight to new game plus so there's items you can get left behind there's all kind of cool loot and things things you can build upon your character and story you can miss out on if you're not playing it right directly if you're not playing it correctly also too if you die you go back to the start of the day that you last saved if you rest in the inn your day goes from one to two to three all the way up to 12. if i die and i've got a bunch of stuff i can't save everything gets wiped away and i start out fresh from the beginning of that day so that's where it kind of puts a little bit more of a stake on the game which i find enjoyable which is a pressure that i felt like the base game needed to keep it like the edge on and i feel like that's where i would want to see them they don't have to necessarily have to go all the way and make this a standard feature for the full game but little elements of it would have been nice to see in the main game but we've talked enough this is the game this is dragon Dama 2 I enjoyed it. Might give I give it a thumbs up. There's opportunities with it, like every game, but the opportunities do not outweigh the magical adventure you're gonna go on. So this is my thoughts on Dragon Dama 2. Thanks for watching. If you're next time, if you're new, subscribe. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Till next time, dear gamers, signing out.